Welcome back to JEOP Evangelistic Outreach Project. I'm your servant leader for today, Rebecca Jerido. If this is your first time joining us, we welcome, we welcome you to our Bible study inspiration. We encourage y'all to stay to the end and also share the Bible study inspiration with others. Today, we're going to be looking at faith. Yes, where is one's faith? Do you have or do you know how to use the measure of faith that God has given? Come as we listen now to the teachings on a measure of faith. Praise God. To God be the glory for all things that he is yet doing in all of our lives. We thank God for the Bible study inspiration to come back again as we're going to look at faith. Yes, where is our faith? God has given us all a measure of faith, but have we really begin to look and see what faith really is in that measure of faith? Turn with me, if you will, now to Romans chapter 12. We're going to look right here at verse number three. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. That's it, my brothers and my sisters. God has given us all a measure of faith. But have we taken the time, my brothers and my sisters, to look and see, as I was saying earlier, what is faith? How this F-A-I-T-H. What really is faith? How does one begin to allow faith to manifest within one's life, to be able to speak faith boldly? I want to suggest we're going to look at several scriptures. Faith is a power gift. Oh, my Lord. And we must be connected to the power source in order to receive the power gift. I'm going to say that one more time. We must be connected to the power source in order to receive the power gift. My Lord, my Lord. Are you there now? John, John chapter 5. Let's start here reading at verse number 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself. But what he seeth the Father do, for whatever things he does, these also does the Son in the same manner. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that he himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. Verse 21, For as the Father raises up the dead and giveth them life, even so the Son giveth life to him he will. That's Jesus, my Lord. For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, Jesus that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, who hath sent him. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, that's John. John chapter 6, verse 30, starting at verse 37. And the Father himself who have sent me, hath bore witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you, whom he hath sent him go. Believe not. This is the authority that God has given his son. His only begotten Son, God has given authority to His Son, Jesus. 
My Lord, we see in the Gospels and throughout the Word of God, during the ministry of Jesus while here on earth, by the ministry where Jesus showed he had she performed miracles, he healing, he 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 te he taught. He taught us everything, the disciples, everything, and all that we need uh, to know. I'm so reminded of one of the, when Jesus went down to the pool of, of Bethesda, and that's in John chapter 5. John, some of you may be familiar with that. When you get a chance, read John chapter 5 in its entirety. And here we see where this man had been at the pool of Bethesda. And when Jesus came, Oh, my Lord, my Lord, when Jesus shows up, something has to happen. When Jesus came, the man, God, Jesus asked him, you know, did he want to be healed? And he was healed at the pool. Jesus told him to take up his bed and go. And he took up his bed and then went, and then he had an encounter later on. He didn't know who Jesus was at the time, according to the word. And then when he saw Jesus in the temple, Oh, my Lord, Jesus spoke to him again. Jesus told the man to sin, sin no more. And then he knew then who it was. So he was saved in the temple. He was, he was healed. He was healed at the pool, but he was saved. Oh, my Lord, his soul was saved in the temple. Praise God, praise God. Jesus gives authority to his disciples. Jesus gives that authority to his, to his disciples. And as we look at Matthew, turn now to Matthew, Matthew chapter 10, and we're going to start reading in verse 1. And the word of God reads, And when he called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of diseases. Oh, over here, verse 2, and it says the disciples then were called apostles when they went out. And verse 2 go, tells the names of those apostles when they went out. They were then called apostles. And now we're going to look at verse 5 of the same chapter, Matthew 10. And there these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, this is Jesus now, commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's where Jesus sent the apostles. That's where he sent his 12 disciples. He told them to go to the house of the house of Israel. That's where they have to go. And when you go, these are the specific instructions that Jesus gave and given an authority. And, and verse 7 reads, And when ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, Freely you have received, and freely you shall give. Praise God. Praise God. Mark speaks of it as well. Also, the authority that was given to the disciples. So turn now to Mark, starting at verse, chapter 6, starting at verse 7. And he called unto him the twelve, and began to send them forth by two and two, and give them authority over unclean spirits. Verse 12, and they went out and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. My Lord, my Lord, the authority that Jesus has given, that faith, our faith then is encapsulated in that authority. When we know who, what the authority that we have in Jesus is a component, I want to say, of faith that we must be in, it, that it's, in, it's deep down in us. It's deep, deep, deep down in us. When we look at the other authority that Jesus has given, turn now to Luke 10. Luke chapter 10, it talks about this, the, um, 
the authority that was given to the 70 others. Yes, that authority. Turn now Luke 10, chapter 1, and the word of God reads, After these things the Lord appointed other 70 also, and sent them two by two before the face into every city and place where he himself would come, where Jesus himself would come. Jesus sent out the 70, the other 70, and verse, and it tells us here in the word of God in verse 10, 17, it says, and the 70 returned again with joy. Woo, my Lord. They returned with joy saying, Lord, even the demons are subject unto us through thy name. And Jesus said unto them, I beheld Satan as, a, as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you, notwithstanding in this rejoice not. Listen what God is saying, notwithstanding in this rejoice not that the spirit are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your name are written in heaven. That's a shout. Your name is written in heaven. The Lord speaks of his seriousness when he sends out messengers. And when, when others reject his messengers, the Lord, that means you're rejecting Jesus. Uh, those are rejecting Jesus. When God sent out the messengers and when it's not received, it's rejecting Jesus. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, but the authority, God has given us the authority that was given. Now, this is here we see that the 12 disciples went out again, and this is now after the resurrection, that authority. We are understanding the process of the authority that God has given his son, Jesus. Turn now to Matthew chapter 28. We're going to start at verse 10. Then said Jesus unto them, and he was talking to then Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. He says here uh, in verse 28, Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren they, that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. This is Jesus. And we go down to verse 18, my brothers and my sisters, and we see here starting at verse 18, and Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And then this is the commission. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Amen. After the resurrection, so for Jesus, this when it's occurred. So for us today, if we have that desire to yet walk in that authority of Jesus to go out and evangelize, the commission to go out and to evangelize in the world, it's in Acts. Let's turn now to Acts chapter 1. Let's turn now Acts chapter 1 verse 8. And the word of God reads, but ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the othermost part of the earth. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, that's our commission for today, my brothers and my sisters. That authority that God, that Jesus, 
God has given us. As we look at the authority, we're going to look now at the confession as a component too of the faith and then also the power through the Holy Ghost. As we look at confession, turn now to 1 John. 1 John chapter 8, verses 9 through 10. And yes, get your word. I have all these the scriptures written down below. You can go back later and write the scriptures down and study. Study God's word to show ourselves approved unto him, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I right, you should be there now. First John chapter 8, verse 9, verse 8. And the word of God reads, If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Mm. Oh, my Lord. Verse 9, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My Lord, my Lord. We'll turn now to 2 Corinthians chapter 7 as we look at confession yet still. And it reads, it's starting at verse 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of, but the sorrow of the world worketh death. My Lord, my Lord. Psalms, David talks, speak to us in Psalms 32 verses 5 and 6. Turn there. I acknowledge my sin unto thee, and my iniquity have I not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Salah. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters, they shall not come near unto him. And, and then here in Acts, we're encouraged by the word of God. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, and the word of God reads, And Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Oh, Jesus, we shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Acts 3, 19, and it's word of God, their reason, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. And when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And oh, then here James teaches us too in James chapter 5, verse 15 and 7, 15 and 16. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sin, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another and pray for one another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. That was the confession. Now we're going to look at the portion of the power, which is the Holy Spirit, the power source. Oh, Jesus, our power source, that we, that is the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Turn now to John 6, 63. It is the Spirit that giveth life. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit, and they are life. The spirit. And they are life. Second Corinthians 12, 9. And it said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. My Lord, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, in reproaches, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. 
Jesus, the power source, Jesus. Second Timothy, I know this is one that we all are familiar with uh, this, but we know how to, use, to how to use it in part of our faith. Second Timothy 1, 7, and the word of God reads, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Power, power. Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Spirit. Jeremiah tells us in Jeremiah 23, 29, it is not my word, is not my word like a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer, that breaketh the rock in pieces? That's a question, my Lord. Jeremiah also go down to 33, chapter 33, verse 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And now Paul encourages us in Ephesians chapter 3. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask, or think according to the power that worketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen, amen. And Peter, Second Peter 3, 17 through 18. Oh my Lord, my Lord, are you excited? about God's word. I know it's a, well, we have scripture, but we have to study, my brothers and my sisters. We have to study, okay? All right, 2 Peter 3, 17 through 18. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing that ye know these things before, beware, lest any also being led away with the error of the wicked. Fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace, and in knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory, both now and forever. Amen. The power gives faith. For faith is faith. God has given us all a measure of faith. The power gives the faith that God has given us all. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. We're going to turn now here as we look at, as we look at, uh, we're going to look right here in Romans, Romans chapter 5. And the word of God reads, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. To, through him also we have access by faith into his grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance produces character and character hope. Now hope does not appoint because the God, the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who has given to us. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Faith, faith. Oh, and Paul tells us too, the just shall live by faith. So my brothers and my sisters, as we look at faith in order to, to grab hold of faith, and when we say that now faith is the substance of things that is hoped for and the evidence of things that is unseen, we see how authority is in faith, how confession is in faith, and the power of the Holy Spirit is in faith. God has given us all a measure of faith. We will pause for a word of prayer. Well, so Holy God, our Father, our Lord and our Savior, Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for our studies on a measure of faith that you've given. 
Father God, we pray and we ask you to give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of your word. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Are you smiling? Are you smiling? Yes, you know that smile can go a long way. Yes, it can, my brothers and my sisters. Share. Share the Bible study inspiration with others. My brothers and my sisters, don't forget to study, to show ourselves for approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed now, rightly dividing the word of truth. Study God's word. We've gone over several scriptures. On today, I'm going to put them down in the box below. Begin to take the word, let impart the word into our being, into our heart. Impart the word in, in our heart so we can be, continue to grow in faith. We can continue to allow faith to come up. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, you have a blessed week. And we'll see you again the next time. God bless you. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, a measure of faith. Yes, as we look at those power gifts of faith, there is authority in Christ Jesus. There is confession, my Lord, my Lord. And then also the power source. Oh, there's power in the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Praise God. We want to thank everyone for watching and sharing with others our Bible study inspiration. Praise God.